Kunne is considering the latest attempt from former President Jacob Zuma's lawyers to postpone his corruption trial. We're expected to get a ruling around that at 2 p.m. Well, let's get some legal analysis now on this morning's proceedings and yesterday's uh, developments. Joining us is criminal law expert Mr. William Booth. Thank you very much, sir, for your time here on All Angles. I'm interested to know of your thoughts to that announcement by the former president yesterday that he would try and go through, uh, you know, private prosecution when it comes to his petition to have Billy Downer removed. Well, first of all, with regard to the private prosecution aspect, um, for anybody to, to go that route, you actually have to get a certificate from the NPA mm. to say that they have uh, declined to prosecute a particular matter, and uh, then you can proceed. So there's a whole process involved um, with regard to bringing a, 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 a private prosecution. It's governed by the Criminal Procedure Act. But quite clearly, when I heard that, I was somewhat surprised because I don't see the NPA giving any form of, uh, as it were, permit, permission or issuing a certificate in that regard. So I don't think that is going to succeed. Certainly with his application today for the matter to be postponed to uh, where he's indicated that he's now approached the president of the Supreme Court of Appeal to kind of have that court reconsider his, his application for leave to appeal on the whole issue of having uh, Billy Downer removed as a prosecutor. Mm. So I understand that Judge Kuhn is going to be delivering his ruling on the postponement at, at, at 2 o'clock. But, um, you know, is there any basis really for such an application? He was turned down by Judge Kuhn. He was turned down, down by by the Supreme Court of Appeal. And again, I think one could kind of uh, strongly argue that, that this may be further, be further delaying tactics from Zuma and his legal team. Mm. I'm sure the uh, state are not very happy with this and they're opposing this application. And obviously the co-accused, uh, um, I'm sure, want the matter to start. There's been so many years of delay. Mm. Uh, well, Mr. Booth, you know, there's also something very interesting that I found today where uh, the former president's legal team um, and his uh, lead, um, you know, defense attorney, advocate Dalim Bofu, telling the court that the former president wants his trial postponed indefinitely. I mean, that would mean that uh, the court is allowing itself to become a revolving door of petitions now as he avoids going on trial. Well, absolutely. And I don't think the court uh, will agree with that. So the court might very well grant the application to postpone the matter. Um, he has got a right to petition the uh, uh, president of the Supreme Court of Appeal. This is all dealt with in terms of the Superior Courts Act. So there is that provision in our law. But again, one mustn't forget that is there, number one, is there any merit in what he's trying to do, have uh, Downer uh, dismissed as the lead prosecutor. And uh, again, that, that there have been so, so many delays with regard to having this case commence. So they can't postpone it indefinitely. Again, I don't know how long it's going to take before the Supreme Court, the President's Supreme Court of Appeal makes a ruling. I trust that will be done very, very speedily. Um, and then the next step after that, I can pretty much guarantee that, is he's going, if, if this application is turned down by the Supreme Court of Appeal, uh, that uh, he's going to then uh, request an opportunity to approach the Constitutional Court. Mm -hmm. So it goes on and on and on. And every single application that he's brought throughout all these years, he's, he's kind of exhausted all the processes. And one must say, yes, in law, you're entitled to do that. But then one must also say, what is the background and the rationale behind bringing all these um, postponements? Yes, you're entitled to apply. But I think, um, you know, again, there was also this uh, veiled threat with regard to if a postponement isn't granted, then you're going to have violence as happened uh, you know, a few months ago in KZN and in Gauté. And I think that is really, uh, if that's the stance of his legal team, I say with all due respect to them, 
it, it, it's not the right way to deal with a matter in court. You know, there's got to be certain rules, there's certain etiquette in court, uh, ethical standards that are set. And it must be, you know, lawyers appearing in court must, uh, my view is, um, you know, comply with, with, with all those standards. Mm. Does he even have prospects to win if he uh, does uh, get uh, Judge President Mandi Samaya to reconsider his petition? I mean, uh, that court dismissed, the SCA dismissed his uh, uh, original application with cost. Yes. So uh, what, what my view is that it's highly unlikely because let's go back to the basis of this petition to, to remove Dauna. Uh, you know, and it's been found now that there is no basis to it, certainly by, by Judge Kuni's refused leave to appeal. This is a petition that went to the Supreme Court of Appeal. That is considered by, by uh, two judges at least, and they've decided there's no merit in the matter. So now, again, it's going to the, 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 uh, the president of that particular court, uh, I don't think there's going to be, and only the president of that court will only look at a matter where there's, you know, really exceptional factors um, as to why uh, the Supreme Court actually refused the, the application for leave. So there's got to be very, very good grounds. I haven't read the application, so I don't know what he's actually saying in it. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe there are. Or, or grounds to, you know, for the uh, president to grant leave, leave to appeal, the president of the Supreme Court of Appeal. But look, I'm not going to prejudge the issue, but that's my view on, on whether there's merit in his application. And I've said on more than one occasion, I don't believe there is any merit in, in his application. But if this is dismissed, then there'll be, uh, you know, as I say, another application to petition the uh, Constitutional Court for them to look at granting leave to appeal and for the matter to be, you know, obviously argued there, if they allow that. And if the, uh, you know, the, the president, um, Judge Maya, refuses the, uh, the application. But as I say, I don't think there's much ground for her to, uh, and I don't want to, you know, prejudge the issue. I don't want to speak on her behalf, as it were. Um, she's very competent to be able to do that in any event, but... Um, you know, I, I can't see there's any merit in this. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Booth, legal expert there, uh, William Booth, speaking yeah. to us, of course, as we wait for that judgment in the Peter Marisburg um, High Court, rather, which is expected to be handed down by um, Judge Kuhn at around 2 o'clock.